Howdy folks. Well today I am going to do an unboxing of the Pip-Boy 2000 Mark VI. When they said this is going to be a do-it-yourself kit, I kind of got excited. So let's see what they did. I gotta say, that's pretty. Now this is a photo exposed aluminum label. That's actually very high quality type of labeling. Um, I'm emulating that type of labeling, not shown, on the uh, Pip-Boy and on the dosometer by using uh, laser etched anodized aluminum. This is the exact same process This uh, where you take a piece of, basically a piece of aluminum that's got a photosensitive layer. You photo expose it just like a photograph and then you etch off and you get this really nice finish. This is exactly how the plates that were done for everything like the Apollo missions um, and pretty much anything you want to have permanent. So I'm really happy to see that instead of something printed. The case itself is the absolute nicest uh, vinyl leather. Actually, it is pretty nice. Real metal hardware, real metal latches. That's always good. Hey, oh, hey, spring loaded too. All right, here we go. Fun, easy, full size. Our future begins, Vault Tech. Symbol, the model of the future today. They got a construction manual. Looks like a full color manual with stickers inside. All right, now the first thing I noticed when they announced this was the hollow tapes. Now that I've played Fallout, yeesh, that's some cheap plastic. They obviously had to shrink the hollow tape down in order to fit it inside this enclosure. Um, makes it so it's not game accurate. Mine, which is 100% game accurate. Guess what, guys? You could have fit mine in, and I would have given you the 3D files for free. In fact, they're already out there. And then, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they copied my little moving door here, because that's not in-game. I did this design, but it's on theirs. All right. Gonna pull things out randomly here. So this is actually metal. That's a good sign. So this looks like a painted metal piece. Interesting that they uh, they kind of they custom cut that instead of say using some actual metal mesh. And let's see if my theory was right. My theory is wrong. So these are the vacuum tubes. I thought they would have just used some little light bulbs. I mean. If you know what an old school mag light flashlight bulb looks like, uh, they're exactly this size with a little point on top. But no, they custom molded those. They would have put a light bulb inside, it would have looked a little more like a vacuum tube, also. Maybe there's something inside here, I don't know yet. Alright, so this is a piece of uh, two part molded plastic. They silk screened on the artwork. And, uh,. It's actually a pretty complex mold, and they ultrasonically welded it together. Which kind of sucks if you want to modify this. Nope, nope, there we go. Never mind. Aha, see, so I have a theory that they were going to put electronics in here and never got around to it. Maybe it'll be released in the future. And uh, this kind of confirms my theory because you see these? Let's see here. Those three little pieces of plastic in there. Well, those would be... Oh. They don't go to anything on here. So those are what you would put in if you were, say, going to hold a circuit board to here. Granted, they've made a sticker for the rad label, so... Mine, fault. Mine actually works. Maybe something will we'll screw in there anyways. 
All right, we've got the other gauge cover, plastic. They at least they painted it with some different textures. This has kind of got a metallic finish to it. And this piece is very similar to the other top piece. This time, both sides don't come off. So these are all molded with the green already in place, no paint, so that's actually going to be good for if you want to paint this and weather it. Uh, if you do any sort of uh, weathering, you won't weather it back to, a, say, a white. All right. Knob here. It's actually made with two pieces with a screw inside. Interesting. wonder why they needed to do that for the mold. Probably because with a new mold plastic, you need to have a uh, consistent thickness all around as much as possible. So you notice that the sidewalls and the insides are the same thickness. And so if you wanted to mold this feature and have it be pretty, this little dome, and you needed this feature on the other side, if you molded it in one piece, you might get what's called sink. And so uh, that's probably why they did it in two pieces. Similar with this piece. Now, I haven't seen the in-game model other than, well, I've played the game, so I can't exactly say how accurate all this is, but uh, they're doing a pretty good job so far on the quality of parts, it looks like. So here's one of the buttons. So red plastic, black plastic, simple parts. At least they're not painted. In fact, uh, this has got that sink going on. You can kind of see where it gets a little bit of imperfection due to that boss being on the inside of the plastic. Not a big deal. Real buttons actually have that same thing going on. My thing is that this is obviously a red button. I don't remember if it glows in-game. Um, if it does glow in-game, it would have been nice if this was uh, glowing too. Actually, uh, whoops. They actually use screws to hold these down. So maybe I should unscrew this instead of uh, popping it off. That's one long screw. I think this is the rad gauge cover. That's nice. It's got a light, slightly different uh, material on it. Painted with... or actually, no, is that molded? That's molded with a metallic finish. That'll at least make it so that the uh, rad gauge looks a little 3D. I hope there's a piece of plastic that goes in here. Oh, one more piece. I'm probably supposed to be doing this in some particular order if I looked at the uh, construction manual, but uh, don't worry, I work for Robco. At least I pretend I do. Well, I guess I can take this out next. So here's the screen. The screen comes apart. Looks like they use some snap fits to uh, hold this piece in. Kind of an inexpensive way to do that instead of uh, spending a few cents on a more on another screw. But actually, the bigger problem is those plastic bosses. So this is actually kind of a clever way to do this. Come out of there. Again, looking at this from an engineering perspective. So they molded these in two different pieces. Which is nice. You can take this apart, repaint it however you want. It looks like it's all snap fit together. And uh, it's not permanent snaps. You saw how easy I got that apart. Uh, which means you can probably take this apart, put it back together, and you will not going not gonna to break any of it. So this is two pieces. There we go. So they molded a uh, black piece. It's got a clear piece. The fact that they did these as two separate pieces, one, it makes this kind of a little cooler looking. Uh, maybe you can uh, put a screen behind this, put some real electronics in it. I hope they actually do that. Uh, it's got a nice curve to it. I plan on doing this with the acrylic. Um, and that's actually most likely this is either... Yeah, it's probably an acrylic piece anyways. Then on the back, we have vault -Tec. And thank you guys for using the proper vault -Tec logo on here. They, uh, I get a little itchy when uh, places use this logo. And maybe it's canon now. But uh, the rounded edges, they should have a small point to them. Alright. Now I'm going to take this out. 
All right, inside we have padded cuff. This is actually uh, some pretty good material. Some uh, faux leather here, but it's got a little bit of a, uh, I guess, suede finish to it. Some Velcro, two different colors. It's actually got, it's all stitched together nicely. Got a real metal rod. I think this is going to be the hinge. Same thing. This is an interesting piece. So this is going to be the buckle. And uh, let's see. I think they used real metal right here. A little bit difficult to tell. No, that's all. It's all plastic. But I wonder if this is glass reinforced or something. Um, it's just, it has a different feel to it. It actually feels a little cold, like maybe they actually metal plated it. Um, but it's got the injection lines, injection mold lines here, and it doesn't feel like it's a casting. Very interesting piece. It's actually got the uh, little grippers that'll actually hold down a strap. So they definitely did some uh, some homework when they designed this. Yeah, I'm probably making some uh, professional unboxers cringe. There we go. Uh, Ball tech, you need to watch your safety on uh, things poking out of your your boxes here. <laughs> So they did, through their word, they included real screws. These are Chicago screws. Some machine screws. Wow, they actually paper wrapped a few things. I gotta say, they did, they did make these high quality. This is a piece of real metal. This is an aluminum extrusion. And actually a pretty uh, interesting one. This makes it lighter. It makes your tooling cost more, and it makes your uh, material a lot lighter. But so that's actually going the extra mile for that. Now this is the uh, hollow tape mechanism. Let's see how this guy works. So they pre-sewed uh, this on. This is real. Uh, not sure if it's nylon. It's definitely not ballistic nylon, but uh, probably is real nylon looks good this is real sheet metal here granted plastic screws so how does this guy supposed to work so that pops up on two little mechanisms there definitely something complex going on in there Hmm. Yeah, so one company you should have contacted me because you could have used my hollow tape and it would have been game accurate. In fact, it could have even been a little bit bigger and still look accurate. This is actually a real nice piece. Uh, there's a different texture. I'm probably out of focus, aren't I? Come on. It's got a different texture here than it does here. This looks a lot like uh, embossed metal, although it's plastic. They do have real metal screws here. And then another piece here. So they did kind of go the extra mile, and instead of just cheaply painting things, they really did do a good job of, uh, of using multiple pieces made in the right material. I'm wondering if this is supposed to be, eject supposed to be spring loaded or not. Don't know. We'll see once I guess I put more of it together. They did a good job with their design where you keep a little bit of a seam line so you can do cleanup. 
you can actually see the injection mold. This is evidence left over from the injection molding. They grind those off. So it looks like this got cast probably in something cheaper and then it got painted. So it got painted, which is why it's confusing me because it doesn't feel exactly like metal. A couple more metal pieces. Interesting, that's a little spring-loaded piece. Curious to see what that's going to do. There's a few other springs in here. Definitely going to uh, want to follow the instructions and not just wing it. Random piece that probably just uh, does something internal. Nice little uh, Robco logo embossed into... Uh... Well, that's interesting. It's got the mesh on there. So that's the faux speaker grill. You can get real metal really cheap that looks like this. I'm curious. So they actually, they actually made this look like a speaker. I couldn't figure out what this part was. That looks like the back side of a speaker. Wonder why they went to the uh, the care to do that. Uh, again, more evidence that I bet you electronics are coming. Another piece. This piece is maybe uh, supposed to have a faux metal finish on it, but uh, that would have been really hard to paint. Yep, a bunch of smaller plastic pieces. So those probably came... These are all in a different bag because they came from a different supplier, most likely. But holy cow, there's some little tiny plastic pieces in there I don't want to lose. Okay. I think it's time for an assembly video.